Okay, so I'm here to um, make a basic modding tutorial. I'm not going to teach you how to use Blender. I'm going to teach you all the steps involved in um, texturing, modeling, and getting it into the creation kit and eventually into a mod um, without crashing. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So, to start, um, we're going to make a very basic model. Now, when you, I'm going to be using Blender, all right? And um, when you make a model in Blender, at least for uh, modding, you don't want any overlapping textures, and you don't want it to be one more than one object. Like you don't want to have spawn two objects and have them intersect to make something. I made that mistake once. Uh, don't repeat it. Just kind of make it one big thing. Um, to start off here, I'm gonna make a very basic, a very very basic shape. Uh, a little house, I guess, will import to the game. So uh, I'm gonna hit Control R. Ma'am, all right, so we're gonna select these two and lift it up a bit. All right, and um, that's it. It's all the modeling we're doing there. So you got your object, you modeled it, you spent countless hours working on this super complex, you know, singular, singular block. It's gotta be one piece and it's gotta be, you know, kind of no, no overlapping blocks, nothing. No, no jankiness, you understand. You can have as complex as you want, but it has to be one singular kind of object, either merged together or whatever, but you can't just have two things on top of each other. It looks bad, and it looks really bad once you get it into NIF scope and eventually the creation kit, which I'll be getting into um, towards the end of this tutorial. So we're going to take this, and we're going to unwrap it. Now, what that is, it kind of gives... The instructions, I guess, on how to properly texture this once inside any sort of uh, game or editor, or generally for exporting. So you're going to need to do this with, well, with pretty much anything you're doing in Blender if you want to make it leave Blender. So, alright, so I'm pretty sure there's a similar process for Maya and all those fancy programs I can't afford and have really no reason to pay for because I don't get paid for this. And, uh, yeah. So I think this looks good. Kind of you know, separates everything evenly. Uh, let's try this out. I've actually tried doing the seam thing. So you don't want to mark a seam. And way you'll think it'll uh, make it look good. I guess kind of separate it all. It's different chunks. It kind of does that on its own as well. Um, we're going to want to mark seam. And then, all right, so the seam is marked. What I want to do then is select everything here. There's a hotkey for this. I don't know it off the top of my head and can't be bothered to look it up again. So just want to select all the vertices. The fastest way to do that is using face select. All right, so now you've got everything selected. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go want to go down here and select. Um, you want to switch, switch it from timeline to UV editor mode and use this bar to kind of drag it up. Right, so you got this weird looking plane down here. What you want to do is you want to hit new. And uh, this is where you make the uh, the actual texture file. It's going to be a PNG, hopefully. And the resolutions of it do matter. You're going to want an event interval of 1024. So 1024 by 1024 is called a 1K texture. Uh, 2048 is what I like using as a 2K. Most computers that can run Fallout 4 can run this. 4K is, well, 480. 496 by 496 and 8k is double that and I think there's 16k I don't I don't I don't really know past that point but we're going to work with this all right because this is you know fairly standard and we're not doing anything fancy at the moment so we're going to hit this when I hit okay and um we didn't actually name name it which is fine for now we can always switch it up so it's going to be untitled we can change it house Texture 11. I'm gonna call it 11 now. And then what I want to do is we want to go over here, right, in the sharing slash slating slash UV section and hit unwrap. And there you go. That's gonna be what you kind of need to do to um, get this in. So if you want to figure out what's what, you want to make sure this is on so that they're synchronized. Um, if you want to figure out what's what, so this one right here and this one. So these two are going to be located right here. So this is the bottom of your house, all right? Um, these are the sides. It's, it's kind of obvious. 
and then this and this are going to be the other sides. So it kind of all makes sense, I guess. So now we've got our blank template, our house texture. And so what we're going to want to do is actually go into Photoshop or any other image editing program for this. Um, and make a texture. So what I want to do for that is it is going to it's kind of save all this, everything. Um, save it as find a folder on your computer or whatever. Um, ignore that. Okay, so we're going to want to find like a nice directory, new directory for every project. Um, so we're going to go e drive as Plunger Tutorial. You can save this anywhere on your computer, it really doesn't matter. And we're going to call this House Midget. Mi okay. S House. Okay, so to get this kind of layout here into a workable format where you can edit in Photoshop or GIMP or, or MS Paint, I don't know why you would do that. Uh, let, me, let me name this as something more uh, stable. House, text, all right, UVs, and then export UV layout. And we're going to want to call it SH, I guess whatever. That's it too. Or I want to export UV layout. Okay. So we're going to leave Blender and we're going to put Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you want to use. Um, or Paint. Don't use Paint. But one last tip, when you do the UV export, you want to make sure that all these faces are selected. If you have it set to synchronizing down here. So let me just do that again. Alright, so now that we're in Photoshop, we've got right here the kind of transparent, uh, but still there, UV layout. This is going to be the baseline. It's kind of hard to see. I don't know how to make you help you guys see it better. Um, what I like to do is I like to go in with the magic wand, wherever that likes to hide, and kind of select all the areas that aren't going to be used. All right, and um, go to select and inverse the layer, inverse the selection, so it's selecting exactly what we want to uh, work with. And then I want to create a mask. All right. And what we're going to want to do, okay, is we're going to want to kind of draw on here. And we're going to want to use this from back here, what our uh, original, you know, the way this was laid out for reference, I guess. So you can tell which part of the map you're working with. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna draw a basic texture and get back to you with um, the tutorial. All right. So here we are with the um, basic texture, and we're gonna want to make actually three versions of this uh, to give it proper depth in game. So um, we're gonna go and we're gonna go file. I want to save it as this is gonna be the normal one. I want to save this as a PNG for the time being. We're going to convert it in a few minutes. We're going to save it to shouse.png. shouse, and then we're going to want to do underscore D. I just do that for formatting. There's no real uh, rules to this. I want it OK. All right. And so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to go into um, Hue and saturation, and we're going to want to turn the saturation all the way down. Now this is going to look kind of disgusting. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to select this entire layer. We're going to go File. We're going to go Edit. And we're going to hit Control I. All right, so it's going to look really weird. All right, that's intentional. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Levels and kind of make it look sharper. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but that's what we're doing here. And we're going to go filter and sharpen. So now, or here you want to do it, filter. 
sharpen. And then we're going to export this, and um, we'll save as a PNG again. And we're going to call it S House, and then underscore S dot PNG. All right. And this is the part where stuff gets weird. We're going to have to go into this program called Crazy Bump or anything else you can do to create normal maps. Uh, if you don't know what a normal map is, if you don't know what a more normal map is, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like a, uh, it creates false depth to any object you place. So we're going to go get into that right now. All right, so here we are in Crazy Bump. This program looks probably older than your parents. We're going to want to open a, uh, we're going to want to do one of these. I want to open a height map from file and go into that folder we were just in and the underscore D version. I'm going to be honest, this doesn't look that good, so we're actually going to go back out. We're going to open a height map from file, and we're going to go into the uh, specular we just created. So, this may look just a little weird. Uh, bear with it. Oh, this is a preview of what's kind of going to look like. We're going to want to tweak this uh, a little bit. So, to make it more intense, we're going to want to drag it up. Drag it down and make it less, and to kind of invert it. It's kind of hard to describe, but this is what it's going to look like. So it's going to be the grain of the wood. Um, God, this is confusing. And that's going to be the side of the house. It's kind of be all wrinkly looking, so we want to adjust that. We want to uh, turn down a very large detail. Turn down a large detail. Um, you can kind of see it looks like, you know, real wood. Or whatever, it's kind of got that depth to it. Um, I think this is all... You know, really cool. And we're going to turn to very fine detail, so all the really small bits kind of get recognized in their own whatever. And sharpen it, whatever floats your boat. So, here you go. Uh, we got ourselves a normal map. This is pretty basic. Here's some other ways of looking at it, I guess. But we're going to go to normals. We're going to get save normal. Save normals to file. I'm going to call it underscore n. And we're going to save it as a dot dds. And we're going to hit save. Alright, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to look at what we've got so far. We have the normal map as a .dds and the diffuse and the specular as a PNG. And what we're going to want to do with this, we're going to open a program called paint.net. And I'm going to show that to you guys right now. It's a free program. Um, it's kind of garbage. But there's also ways of doing this within Photoshop and GIMP. But to get it in either of those programs is extremely complicated. So we're going to open one of them. Uh, let's take... The normal one first. And now what we're going to have to do is get File, Save As. Hey, and set to dot DDS. We're going to uh, turn off all this compression uh, for highest quality and hit OK. And we're going to want to do the same thing all over again with the specular. So that concludes the modeling and texturing portion of this tutorial. Um, in the second part, I'm going to explain to you how to get it from this into the directory of Fallout 4. Uh, how to set up a material file. How to set up a, um, a NIF file with their model and everything in it. And then lastly, uh, we're going to set up this into the creation kit so we can use it as a mod so we can use it as whatever so um that'll probably be out later today or tomorrow depending on when i upload this 
So I uh, hope you find this useful. Leave a like and subscribe and comment. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask me. I'm glad to help. And um, see you next episode.